Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Planes video. In this video, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of work on the flight management computer for the SWL120. So, let's get started. I'm not going to be fully finishing this in this video, this is a very complex system and it will take a lot of work. What I want to do in this video is I want to set it up so I can add more pages and I'm also going to add those pages. I'm not going to put every single function of all the pages in but I'm going to add each different page so I'm going to add for example all of the three sub pages of the flight plan page. I'm not going to add all the imports you can put in those pages but I'm going to add those pages just so I have those pages, and so the page selector code is all coded for me. I'm also going to add in the ability to have some identifier text above each of the main options. Um, what's going to make sense? I'll just show you the radio manager computer. So, on the RMC, you can see here I have my active and standby, and this is not something you can click, like, um, what, what makes the best sense. So I type in a frequency. This text here sort of serves as like an identifier for what this column is, so the active tells me these are the active frequencies. And on the FMC in real life, these like identifier texts are on each of the different lines. Um, I'm, not really sure. I'm trying to make sense here. But basically the current FMC does not have those lines, so this is not the best view. Here we go. The current FMC does not have these lines. It just has buttons when you can select things. And what I want to do with this is I want to remove the seventh button. So I just have six buttons. And that will allow me to space out the six lines that you can select to allow for the addition of that identifier text on each different line. This shouldn't be too complicated. I just need to first delete the button. And then I shall just put this into like building mode which means I just nudge it out a bit, then I note the rotation, I can just use this one later, make this rotation, um, I think 90 will go, there we go, just gonna nudge it down a bit more, and then I can just space out the buttons a little more. Oh, I shouldn't have deleted those extra set buttons, but I'll just nudge these down a bit, then I'll nudge this one down, um, one, two, three, yeah, three, four, and five. And I can do the same for the other side. Five, four, three, two, and one. This one is just zero because that's where it's going to stay. Now I need to actually move the label itself. This is going to be somewhat complicated because the label has well actually it's not that much code what I can just do here is I can just change the line height to wherever that went well, actually there's no line height because the line height at its default so I'll just increase the line height to be what I'll do 110% we'll just see what that looks like because what I want to have is I want to have the fourth page here match up with the fourth button. So what I can do is I can just go into line height here. And I can just keep doing trial and error until it is where I want it to be. I think 118% looks good. I'm just going to check that with the two other lines. So if I put in that same line it does not match up. Um, that's a bit of an issue, see here? How this button is not at the same height as this top page. So I think the solution to that will be to... let me just think. What I can do is I can move the line height to be... actually... where is it? 
I think I'll move the line height to be right there. That way it only takes effect after this first page, like this first line. Then I can adjust it, I'm getting there, there it is, and I can adjust it until all the page lines match up with the buttons. So 120, 1, 120, um, I think 125 makes the most sense. Then I can just quickly nudge it till everything matches up. That makes it. That looks right. Now that did cause my temporary value input, which is what all this code is, to disappear. So what I can do for that is try removing. Actually, no, I don't need to do that. I can just remove that extra line because we don't have seven lines. We now have six. So it's one line here because this is the line because the return text is the top line, the first line. Two, three, four, five, six. So all of these ones have six, and these ones are the code for each of the pages. Currently, it just says return. That's all I've done so far. But eventually, this will include all the text. So this just displays the text, and eventually, all the alphanumeric. Well, I should probably explain how this worked before I talk about things, including how it works. So, twenty minutes later. Well, I tried to explain how it works, but I did not do a good job of it. I discovered while trying to explain how it works, I did not actually understand how some of it worked myself. So I'll just explain how, like, the front end, or what you actually see, part of it works. So here we have a keypad, and I'll explain some of this in my... Not my last video, but like, one of my recent videos. I'll just explain it again here. So, um, the temporary values disappeared again. I should probably fix that first, so... Uh, here's the issue, I didn't remove the extra space there. It's still not there. Actually, I will just hide in some line height, so... Slash line height. That cancels out the line height. That didn't work. Actually, I'll just make it a line height of less than 100. So 90%? No. There it is. Okay, so we have that now. So this is a temporary value. And when we type in some text using this keypad, that text is stored in some variables, which I'm not going to explain because it's quite complicated. Like, really complicated. It has like six variables in it. More than six, it has like whatever the number on screen is. So you can type up to six characters. You can, have, you can use a variety of numbers and letters, as well as some special characters like the decimal. The plus, although I think I'm going to swap that out for Instead of being a plus for a t character, it's going to be a negative or positive for the number waypoint system. So you can use numbers, letters, and I think the decimal will just stay in there as like a character you can type in. And you can also use a space. You can see here there's like an empty character, that's a space here. This is not stored within the label itself. The label does have some somewhat complicated code, which reads some numbers. Um, I guess I'm going to have to explain some of it. I'm not going to explain the variable logic which actually stores all of this, but I'm going to explain basically how it works. So, when you type a letter on the keypad, or any character on the keypad, that keypad outputs a number, not a letter, because you can't actually output letters in monkey trees. So it outputs a number, for example, for A, I think it's like 15 or something which is stored in some variables and when you type in another letter that that number is also stored and then when the label reads that it has a very it's not like complex but it's like repetitive multi-selector logic where pretty much if this variable so like I'm just gonna call it variable 1 that's not its name but anyway if variable 1 is 1 then display 1 if not, then if it's 2, display 2. If that's not it, then if it's 3, and so on. Until we have something like, if it's K, then display K. If it's not, sorry, sorry, if it's not K. If variable 1 is 17, then display K. Uh, then if it's 18, display L, and so on. That's how it works. So, I've pretty much 
created my own alphanumeric system for storing letters. It's sort of like how computers store any data in binary, but it's it's slightly simpler for simple planes because I can just use more numbers than zeros and ones. I hope that made sense. Now they understood sort of how it works. I can actually explain what I was going to explain. What was I going to explain? Ah, that's right. I was going to explain how the front and side of the flight management computer works. So you, you have your temporary value, which I've exp explained sort of how it stores numbers and letters as alphanumeric numbers in the code. So when you want to say change a page, um, I'm not going to try to explain how the changing a page code works because that's a very advanced one. Basically, when you change a page, like let's say when you click on flight plan, some code runs which takes in the value of select option, which is this number here. I have this variable debugged up here, which is fmcr current page, so this tells me what current page we're on. So, it, so based on what the output value of each of these, these all these buttons all have the same variable, which is fmcr select option, but the different output values, like it's 10, 20, 30 for this one, 40, and so on. And it, this code reads that number, and based on what the current page already is, and what options have coded in to be on that page, it will then do an action like, you know, I just noticed that, that's an issue, the temporary value is up a bit, I'll fix that. So basically, based on what is, what's on that page, it will either just change a page, or it'll do something like, I think the RMC is the best example of this, which is already coded. Just say you have something typed in here. If you select this button, then it knows we're on the very high frequency page, or VHF. So then it will write that number to that this frequency here, in which is a, a bunch of variables in the back end side. And it knows we're on the VHF page, so it will do that. And I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. So it'll write it to the, this specific frequency on the VHF page because it knows it on the VHF page and I've clicked this exact button. It's a similar idea for this. Now the FMCL current page variable doesn't actually handle all of that. It just handles the pages. So basically it's like it just it changes a page if one and one of many different pages and I've clicked a specific button. For example, if I'm on the flight plan page and I click the first option, which is the top left one, then it knows that one is the one you go home from. So if you click this, it'll set the page to be zero or home. Now the label does not exist in that code at all. It just serves as like a visual cue for the user to understand what they're doing. So I can delete the label and follow that code and the actual code will work fine. So the label just displays information. It's like a screen. That's what it really is. It's a screen. You don't need the screen to actually interact with it, but the screen's highly useful in understanding what you're actually doing. Now I have a few bugs to fix. I need to fix this issue where the temporary value is above where it should be. And also, when you type in a frequency in the VHF, it will no longer clear it. I'm not sure why that is. Here's an example of what it should do on the transponder screen. If I type in something like this, it will clear it when I put it into the code. That should happen on these pages, but it does not for some reason. I'm not sure why. So let me just go and fix that quickly. Hang on, I figured out why it isn't working. It's because of a logical issue with the code. So if I type in some code that is all the way, that's not the best number, so let's say I know some ones. All the way, so every all of the six characters are put in. Then they will clear it, but because of how this code works here, um, let me just try and explain briefly how this works. So basically, I have some code which does some checking with some booleans and some logic, and pretty much, if the page is not the transponder screen, so it's if, if it's VHF, high frequency, or nav, it's, if it's any one of those three, or it's on the transponder screen, and you've only selected this button. Then, if any of that is true, then it'll output 1. And if that massive code that outputs 1 if some, some stuff is true, so let's say, an example of that would be, I have some stuff in here, yes. And I've selected, let's say, this button, also yes. 
if that is true, that which is equal, so we have one now. If I'm just repeating myself, so basically, if, if all that is one, then if the number which is so if the number says six, which is only true if all six characters here are entered, th only then do we tell some code to clear this input. So if I don't have all six characters entered, I just have, say, four or any other number than four, six, then it will not clear it. But if it's six, then it will clear it. So instead of having the number being six, we just need to make it be greater than zero, so or not zero. So basically, if it's greater than zero, then run the code. So let's try that. So I have six characters. I can put them in here. But if I have less than six characters, say this. Oh, it does not clear it. Why does that not happen? Oh, I know why. So you can see here on my folders workspace tree, I have the files working on .xml. Then I have that same file, but it's .xml.back. That's a backup file. And if, for example, I forget to put in the number I was going to type in, which is 1, uh, it's not 0, then it will actually load in the backup file, which overwrites the file that I worked on, which basically means my changes didn't actually take effect. So, with my fixed changes, let's try that. Number that's 6 works. Number that's less than 6. What? Oh, it's because I was working on the, the right one. Yeah, it's because I was working on the right one. Because each of these different RMCs can work independently and just write to the same variables. So each of these has its own independent temporary value code. So the right one works fine. I just need to do it as well on the left one. That's pretty simple here. Just find RMC L. Then at the end of that, greater than zero, then make it one. And I can see here, works fine. So now I've solved that issue, we can actually get to work on the original issue here, which is this temporary value stuff moves up a bit. It's a simple explanation, so the line height, which was increasing my line height, which is basically expanding um, the text in preparation for those identification texts, is inside the display text for the home page. So if the home page isn't displayed, then our line height isn't actually taking effect. So all I need to do there is just move it outside of that selector. And problem solved. So now that I've explained how the flight management computer works, I can actually go ahead and add the screens now. This video will definitely be part one of a few videos, and in this video, at least for the screens, all I'm going to do is just add the screens I've planned out in this flowchart here. So you can see here we have the home page, which is this home page here. And then that home page branches out into our eight different screens. And then I'm only going to work on the flight plan side of things for now. So the flight plan page branches out into its own sub pages. So there's a bit of a key f for all of this. So, for example, on the flight plan page, the, w the normal lowercase and uppercase letters is what the page is in normal wording. Then the all capitals word is what is actually displayed on the header. So you can see here if we go into flight plan, it displays flight plan. And then the number tells me, well, it's not like it doesn't tell me anything, but the number is something that I use in the back end code for the page. So I have this page here which deconstructs the code used for the selecting the page. So it basically tells me how does this code work to change the page from all the different variables. So what this code really does is it compares what button you click. So let's say I select the first button. This actually has an output value of 10. I could have done one, but I guess it did 10 for simplicity so I can figure this out. And this one is 20, this one is 30, and so on. And it takes that number, the output value of that button, and compares it to what page you're already on. So if you select, say, this button here, which is the output value of 10, when you're on the home page, then it will put you on the flight plan page. But if you're on the flight plan page, then clicking the same button will actually put you to the home page. So that's what this code does. It, does, it compares what page you're on to what button you clicked, essentially. 
and then change the page. And luckily I wrote the explanation for deconstructing this code when I made this code, because otherwise I would have had no idea what I was looking at. I'm not going to really try and explain how this code works. Well, I guess I did explain it, but I'm not going to explain the funky tree side of things. So if you want to pause the video and look at this, then you can do that. But I'm not going to actually explain how it works. So back to the flowchart. Each of these pages mapped out here has what the page on the actual FMC will look like. From this, I can figure out what I need to code for the function of each of these buttons and what each of these things is. But for now, all I want to do is code the variable which changes the pages. I'm not going to code all the different functions for all of these different inputs, but yeah, I'm just going to do the pages. I guess I didn't really explain how this number works, but this number is what number page it is for all the pages, which is useful for the label. And also for some other code which does the back end stuff, but I'm just going to talk about the front end, what you see. So let's say you're on the home page, then you will see what you see here, because the variable is currently zero. So you will see this, and if it's, I guess it's, it's really it's really anything else, but if it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or 80, then you'll just see return, and then some spaces. And that will change, and actually that is going to change right now. So, uh, for example, I'm just going to do the flight plan homepage. So the flight plan, not well, the homepage, but the flight plan page, instead of just having a turn, it's going to have all of this. Now, in green text, that is what the information text, which I've explained earlier, is going to display. And for simplicity and coding-wise, we're going to actually have that as a separate label. So I'm just going to get this label, duplicate it, put it back. This label is going to be pretty simple in terms of actual code compared to the main label, which has to have all of the character display code, so I'm just going to delete all of that. Make sure my size, font, and color is correct, or the font's the same. I want to make this label have the same height and width of the main label. Well, actually, I guess I could do the same um, not length, like z-axis, to have that. I'm just going to put in some stuff now. Move that up, and then I can put in just the size. So I'm just going to make the size being 50%. Okay, so two things. 50% is too small, I'll try 70. And I also need to fix that M space. So the M space is a universal spacing between all the characters. So you can see here that's spaced out a bit. So if I decrease it to something like, um, yeah, but 0.7, that is spaced correctly. And I can remove the center bit because that's just for the top on the original label. Then I can just do some trial and error with enter. Actually, that can be changed using line height. So, if I make the line height maybe 50%, then I can just add in more enters as I need to, or the breaks. Now, on the home page, I don't actually need to have any of these, but of course, on the other pages, I will, at least for some sections. This is looking good, but I just need to fix the line height more. So, a little less line height. What I want to do is just make the distance between flight plan and this test, the same as the distance between takeoff and this test. It looks right, but I might need to change that. So if I try a line height of maybe 43 or 42, I think 42 will work. And then I can just nudge the entire label back a bit until the test is in the middle of all these spaces. Then I can delete the extra ones, so I just need six of them. And there we go. Now this is far from done. I need to change it from test to something else and also need to make it appear based on what page you're on. Which is especially where that current page number comes in. So if the FMCR current page, I'll just I'm just gonna make it appear when it's ten. So if FMCR current page or current page, if that's what the variable's called, equals ten, that's what number of the page is according to my flowchart, then display all of that. Otherwise, actually I, just, I can just put an enter here. Otherwise display nothing. And I'll also need to add the opening curly bracket. And there we go. And I can get rid of that. And it's hidden now because it's not on the flight plan page, but let's see what happens. Oh, it helps to actually attach the label. So I can find my label and actually attach it. It doesn't matter how good you are at coding, you always need to actually attach the label, otherwise no matter what you write, it won't appear at all, because it's not there. There we go. When you're on the flight plan page, bunch of tests, anything else, nothing. 
So now it is time to actually code in the different pages into the labels. Like I've explained already, I'm not going to code in the functions, I'm just going to put in the dashes and squares as they are. The 10 is a flight plan page. The header is actually up here because of how the label works. I just know because the numbers 10 is the flight plan page. So we have a return at the top, and then we have literally just four squares, and then another four squares, and I, I'll space out the distance eventually. So we have four squares with an unknown amount of spaces. Then we have six dashes. Then we have our climb page link, so I'm just going to put in that. Again, I'll figure out this. Actually, I don't need to do that here. Because of the universal space I'm using here, I can see how many characters I'm using in here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And I just need to make sure I have that many characters in my other lines. So I have 8 squares total. So 17 minus 8 equals 9. So I should have 9 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I can do something similar with the next line. So I have 6 dashes plus 5 characters for the climb link. And then I'll have 6 spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then that is... Actually, that's not all I have. Then I have... Three more links, so I have the link to the cruise page, then I have my link to the approach page, and then I have the flight plan page. Like the actual, I know we're on the flight plan page here, but there's actually a page where you manage the actual flight plans. So I have eight characters here, so that would mean that I can actually just copy these spaces here. That's just a nine. And then the flight plan is only on the left side, so I don't need to worry about that. Let's see if that worked. Yes, it did. Then I can just put in the text for the other label, which is, I'm just going to call the information label, and um, whatever it's called. There's a lot of things in here that I'm not calling the actual names. I'm just calling them what I think makes sense for me. But I don't need the upper one, so I can delete that. I'm going to leave the enter in there. Then for the next one, I can put in origin. And destination. I do not actually know the spaces required for this, so I'm just going to leave it like about that, then I'll figure that out soon. Then I have one space in here, otherwise it looks too close to the edge. Then I have below that flight no for the flight number. And then that is actually it. And because this label has nothing else, I can just delete everything else. I'm just gonna change this to zero so I can look at the spaces. This label is quite small, so the number of spaces required between the two texts is substantially larger. Then I can just put this back to the flight plan page and see how that looks. I think that looks pretty good, although our temporary value input has disappeared again. Not sure why. Oh right, I forgot to move the enter. I keep pressing enter after I've typed in a line, but I've already typed in my enters, so I just add an extra enter. Or an extra line. There it is. And currently, of course, nothing happens when you actually try and use things, but in the final version, maybe in my next video, you'll be able to actually input stuff. The other thing I wanted to do before I end up this video, because I'm getting close to the end, is make the climb, cruise, approach, and flight plans pages, and the code that changes the page to be them. Okay, so I've gone ahead and coded up that. It pretty much follows the pattern of this flowchart, so if you're on the flight plan page, or the page is 10, and then you select one of these four options, then it'll set it to one of those four options, based on what you selected. And then if you're on one of those four options, like the pages, and you click the return button, then it'll put you back to the flight plan. So let's debug that expression, fmcr, current page, and see what it looks like. So on the flight plan page, you can see it's currently 10. And when you click the climb, it sets it to 11, which is what the climb page is. I'm just going to call it unique identifier, I guess, is 11. You can click return, which puts it back to 10. Same for approach, which is 13. Cruise is 12. 
and flight plans is 14. This is the first time I've tested this code after code yet. Like I just wrote the entire thing and, and just tried it out now. And for once it actually all worked. So now I can, in the label, code in the screens. Again, this is actually quite simple because I'm not making them function. I'm just typing in what they actually look like. This is pretty simple. I just need to copy the code for the flight plan screen. Paste it in a few times. And if it's 11, 12, 13, I'm just going to put those in as well as 14. 11, 12, or 14. Then we can put in the custom displayed, which is helpful to refer to the flowchart for. So for 11, which is our climb page, it's actually quite simple because I, I didn't really want to make a perfect copy of the real life flight manager computer, especially since the 120 is a custom plane, like it's fictional. I just, I just made it a very simplified version of the flight manager computer. You may think this is pretty advanced, but if you look at the real thing, this is nothing like it. So all we really have is just dashes. So we have four dashes. I'm just going to steal my squares. So four dashes. Then we have actually just three boxes. I'll figure out the exact spacing later. And then we just have six more dashes. And that's all we have for the, the climb page. I think that's five spaces. Like five lines. I'm just gonna go ahead and write out these screens. One hour later. Well, I think I have done that. So we have a flight plan. I think you've seen this. Climb. We have a climb page, approach page, cruise page, and flight plan page. Right now, they are, of course, not functional. But in my next video, I'll definitely be working on making them. Well, not completely functional because then I would have to start working on the autopilot but next week I'm going to be working on either adding more screens or adding what functionality I can to these screens. Now some things I can't work on right now are the autopilot, the iOS and all the flight manager computer functions for that but what I can do is work on entering and storing some information into the FMC for example a flight number that has some function in real life, but here is just like a, a useless gimmick you can just do if you want to. So that's something I could work on in next week's video. So I think that is going to be it for this video with the explanation of how this works, at least somewhat, and also adding some screens to it. And in my next video, I'll be w definitely working on the FMC, and I'll either be working on adding more screens, or making some functions of these screens, like the entering information, and also yeah, just enter information and some easy to code functions of the FMC. So I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!